A rare Leonardo da Vinci painting just sold for $450 million. But what you may have missed at the same auction was the sale of this monstrosity. How much do you reckon? Did somebody buy it for $20 for a laugh? No. $46 million! $46 million for something that resembles what would probably happen if a two-year-old toddler was left on its own with a bottle of ketchup. Listen to the absolute tripe they spout to describe it. Red is the colour of wine but also of blood and these canvases encompass both the sensual pleasure and violent debauchery associated with the god. This contrast is echoed in the painting's combination of euphoric loops that saw upwards and vermilion floods of paint that ooze and cascade down the canvas. The unfurling gestures of these paintings were made like Henry Matisse's works in old age with a brush affixed to the end of a pole which lends them their vitality and scale. What a load of bollocks. That gibberish is another example of obscurantism, a rhetorical device modern art snobs use to disguise the fact that their art is completely meaningless. It's just a fancy way of confusing people so their initial discernment is temporarily suspended, making them afraid of criticising such art for fear of appearing uncultured or ignorant. In reality, their first instinct is totally correct. The vast majority of modern art is talentless trash. Sometimes it's literally trash. And the entire industry is a price-fixing scam, where galleries and auction houses in coordination with elitist collectors keep values grossly inflated. Collectors also gift crappy inflated modern art as a charitable donation so they can avoid paying tax. Others buy shitty modern art simply as a way to launch under money. It took Da Vinci three years to paint The Last Supper. The bloke who did this just stuck a brush to a pole, dipped it in paint, went like that a few times and hey presto, that'll be 46 million dollars please. He spent just as much time thinking up a name for it and after I'm sure what was an intense period of internal debate, he eventually settled on Untitled. Oh, but wait, it's part of a series. Because it really looks like a lot of forethought went into the other one, given that it looks almost identical. The Guardian called the artist Cy Twombly, quote, the most intelligent and emotionally eloquent artist of our age. Yeah, our age is shit, isn't it? Here's another spectacular work from the most intelligent and emotionally eloquent artist of our age. What endless list of titles did Twombly agonise over before naming this one? Oh, it's called Untitled. Again. I call it testing a biro pen. What makes this all the more ironic is that Twombly was obsessed with Leonardo da Vinci, which is like the schlob who designed this being obsessed with Isambard Kingdom Brunel. The age of Trump derangement syndrome has only intensified the belief that anything can be considered art if it serves to amplify some demented far-left political cliché. The carpet, if you look very closely, you see? You see? It's made up of thousands and thousands oh. of African babies. Oh. Oh. oh, it's like he's literally walking on, on African babies. Yes. And like, so, so he's like the West, and, and, and the African babies are like Africa. Mm, that's a very good interpretation. Remember the Black Lives Matter supporting performance artist who twerked her giant fat ass once for every time an African American was killed by a cop? Yeah, that was my favourite. Now a transgender artist has collected 200 gallons of urine to protest Trump. Yeah, stockpiling piss isn't art. It's a mental illness. This artist embarked on a quote, observation of zeitgeist through the so-called thanato-political dimension of contemporary biopolitical practices. What actually happened is that she breastfed her own dogs, which is closer to animal abuse than it is art, but who am I to judge? This genius didn't even bother slapping a few splodges of paint on a canvas and instead just literally wrote the words, please imagine a boring abstract painting. But why even bother writing anything when you can just glue cardboard boxes to the wall? Having already blown hot Half a million dollars on a blue ring, Calgary wasn't finished yet. Artists always say their aim is to move people with their work. Well, a massive new sculpture in Calgary is definitely moving a lot of people there into writing hate mail. Just off the Trans-Canada Highway stands Calgary's latest public art installation, Beaufort Towers. The project cost half a million dollars. The Museum of Modern Art in New York, MoMA, remains as cancerous as ever. This piece of art celebrates, quote, downtown counterculture. Exactly what's artistic or counterculture about some pouting soy boy flouncing around in front of a camera, your guess is as good as mine. I just feel like even like the reductive nature of this, like his color scheme is so fascinating. Yeah, his color scheme is so fascinating, he's literally used 
one caller respondents to the Twitter thread reacted with their own pieces, all of which were actually more intricate than the dross hanging in the gallery. Share photos on Instagram showing how you interpret the hijab as part of a modern wardrobe. Yeah, the hijab is so modern that women all over the Middle East who refuse to wear it or simply let it slip are subjected to abuse, beatings, imprisonment and death. So modern, so progressive. Next up at MoMA, share photos showing how you interpret the chastity belt as part of a modern wardrobe, but given how insufferably boring and pointless their exhibitions are, it was thoughtful of MoMA to provide this jigsaw puzzle for visitors. Oh no, that's a piece of art too. No, an unfinished jigsaw puzzle is not art. It's an unfinished jigsaw puzzle. If people say it's art, it's art. Um, well, I think it might be, I think that's it absolute might, rubbish. It may be. So you could say anything is art? Wait, you you could, just have. You could say everything is art. But the point is that... Is my shoe art? If you say it is, I have to then judge it on those terms. Well, I think that's a totally ridiculous argument. Well, I never heard anything more ludicrous in my life well, it's before. Sort of Replica sports shirts. They're not art. They're replica sports shirts. Just because you moved them to a different location and devoted a poncy pretentious monologue to them doesn't suddenly make them art. They're still replica sports shirts. Just like sticking a piece of plastic shit through a toilet roll holder doesn't change the fact that it's just a piece of plastic shit stuck through a toilet roll holder. Art that has to be in a gallery to be art isn't art. Some kids left a pineapple in the middle of an exhibition and people mistook it for art, thinking that everything is subjective, that there are no objective standards of beauty and that anything can be considered art isn't a refined opinion. It's dumb. If you think that, you're not sophisticated. You're a clown. Students are now being taught that believing in objective standards of beauty in art is cultural fascism. Beauty has fallen into disrepute. For some reason, uh, people have uh, marginalised the pursuit of beauty. There's been a huge cultural shift. Uh, uh, an almost deliberate attempt to expel beauty from the place in human life that it naturally occupies, which is the centre. The message that art has been perpetrating for the last 50 or even 100 years, that in the end, that our aspirations to be something better are all uh, self-deception and delusion. Of course there is natural beauty, and there's the beauty of the human face and the human form, there's the beauty of animals uh, and the beauty of landscape. Everybody is aware of that. It stands there as an independent witness to the meaning of the universe. What kind of damage is all this doing to the fabric of Western civilization? 700 years after the start of the Renaissance, and this is where we've arrived. If this is what we call high culture, an endless parade of meaningless debris that promises nothing and delivers nothing, what does this say about our society? What does this say about our contribution to the grand tapestry of man? mankind's collective achievement. What does this say about how we've let these culture vultures tarnish and defile the legacy of beauty handed down by our ancestors? We mustn't be afraid to loudly proclaim the emperor has no clothes. We mustn't be afraid to call out abstract modern art for precisely what it is. A wretched, ugly manifestation of postmodernism. An insult to our heritage. A desecration of our human potential. Please click the big red button to subscribe, it really helps me when you do that, and click the bell to allow notifications so you never miss a new video.